country on earth. But it gets better. better. This Week in Costa Rica brings you the best information. The best, the best. From the people who understand why so many choose to call this beautiful place home. Bringing you the latest information from expats, experts, and people just like you who chose to escape, retire, and live in Costa Rica. This Week in Costa Rica. Pura Vida. Welcome back to This Week in Costa Rica. Thank you guys for sticking around. Always appreciate it. During these brief commercial breaks, got to pay the bills around here, you know. As I was saying earlier in the show today, look, I feel old. I feel really old. But since I've moved down here to Costa Rica, I feel like there's more I can be doing about it. You know, exercise, eating well, but taking care of myself is one thing. But sometimes I think you need a little bit more of a boost behind you. And I'm happy to have on the phone right now Mr. James Ritchie from the Anti-Aging and Wellness Clinic here in Costa Rica. James, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Really good. Thanks for joining the program today. Well, it's great to be here, Corey. Thank you very much. I would love to start out with you, James. Just a little bit of background on who you are and what brought you down to Costa Rica in the first place. Well, I, uh, I got... Tied up. Uh, this was around 1987. Into the uh, after I graduated university and so forth, into the wireless cellular business. And at that time, you know, there were only a handful of uh, cell phones in people's cars. And well, we went all over the world. We developed a product that was used for testing and engineering wireless networks, and that gave us an opportunity to travel all over the world, uh, different countries, both in Latin America, Asia, Europe. And uh, we came across Costa Rica. And around the year of 2000, uh, when we had the height of the internet boom back in the United States, we decided to open up a a facility here for software development for making wireless test tools. And uh, that's pretty much how I got down here in Costa Rica. And of course, during your time here, I'm sure you noted that, that Costa Rica really has become this sort of leading global community or country for medical tourism, right? Absolutely. You know, I, I have a five year old daughter and I chose to have her, um, her birth to, to take place in Costa Rica over the United States because of the low infant mortality rate, uh, the great number of uh, medical institutions they have here, and the fact that it, you know if anybody goes back to the last World Health Organization's um, uh, review of all the countries, Costa Rica actually ranks um, one slot ahead of the United States in the ranking uh, for offering the best uh, medical services to its citizens. Yeah, you know, we've spoken a lot about this on the program is that, you know, as a a Canadian as well, we like to boast about our healthcare system and the quality of our hospitals and doctors, etc. But I have to say down here in Costa Rica, I mean, the quality of service that I receive, both in some cases in the public sector and in the private sector is is bar none one of the best I've ever had in the world. And I've been to hospitals both in Canada, the U.S. and here and uh, and Venezuela as well. So I have to say, I mean, these guys really have their stuff together. I think so. I, I think they cut through the chase, too. You know, there's so much of a bureaucratic system. I don't know how Canada is exactly, but especially in the United States where it's so difficult to get access to the doctor. When you do get access to the doctor, it's only for a few minutes at a time. You know, he's got maybe a, you know, anywhere between 2,000 and 4,000 patients he's trying to burn through every so many months. And um, quite often, you just don't get the time you need to really dig deep and drill down and try to find out what's going on. And and um, there's a lot of things that are going on with us. I mean, we've got a major obesity problem in the world. We've got Alzheimer's disease, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, you name it. And um, something's not right. So I believe uh, Costa Rica and other countries like it that can be a little bit more innovative in their, their health care and also a little more uh, doctor-patient uh, relationship that's developed. It's, you know, in the United States particularly in the United States, I I consider it revolving door medicine. You go in and out. And um, once you leave, you say, oh, I should have asked him these other five or ten questions, and then you got to wait another two weeks to get back in to see the doctor. Yeah, we see this all the time here. And, you know, I I can't believe it. I have, I'm holding my phone in my hand, and I've got the cell phone numbers of two doctors that I've seen here uh, on the West Coast in Hako, and they're fantastic. You know, if I'm ever feeling like something or I want something checked out, I just go down there and make an appointment, and I see them for an hour or more. And then they give me their card and their cell phone number and say, look, if you, if you display any of these symptoms or anything, just call me at home and I'll come over to your place and I'll take right. a look at you and make sure everything's okay. Uh, and even in those cases, when I go in for maybe just a, like a 15-minute checkup, they say, look, you've got me for the hour. Do you want to go over some other things? And they'll run other tests on me as well just to make sure that, 
kind of everything checks out. There's a more holistic approach. And I think maybe in part it's because I think in the U.S. things are so litigious, you know, and there's always these concerns of being sued as a doctor and they're overwhelmed with patients. Uh, whereas here, you know, we're operating under common law and things are a little bit different. And I like what you said. They kind of cut to the chase, uh, you know, following this. I just had an experience yesterday where we went to the Clinica Biblica pharmacy to, to fill a prescription. And, uh, you know, there are a couple of follow-up questions that the, the doctor there has to ask. Um, but they took all of those answers on our word. They didn't require the documents from the doctor or any of the notes. You know, they just said, do you have a thyroid exam or have you had one recently? We said yes. And they said, okay, great. That's perfect. That's all we need to know. And then they filled the prescription. Yeah, that's true. I mean, like I said, they're trying to, what they're trying to do is provide customer service. And I think in the U S what they're trying to do is, you know, sort out who might be trying to cheat the system in some way. And, um, you know, overwhelmingly that's not the case. And I think countries like Costa Rica see that and they don't have the, uh, you know, countries, especially the, in the emerging markets, they really don't have all this abundance of wealth to, um, keep, layering on uh, unnecessary levels of bureaucracy. So you, you really get to the point. Um, Costa Rica doctors, it, it, you know, Costa Rica is known as a top five medical tourism destination. And a lot of times that what happens is because it's such a large uh, tourist, um, has such a large uh, tourism industry here, that many people come down and they, they learn about Costa Rica and they find out it's not the third world. I mean, there's modern restaurants, there's great things to do here. And uh, once they learn that, then they start poking around about, um, you know, maybe I want to get some plastic surgery done, or maybe I want to get some dental work done, or maybe I want to do anti-aging or age management medicine. And once they learn about that, they, they see that they can get good contact with the doctor. They can spend time if they have questions. Uh, doctors are willing to exchange emails with patients here. They're, as you said, you've got the phone numbers in there. You, you've probably sent a text message to your doctor one or two times here. And, gotten a response right away where, where if you were in the United States and let's say you had a, a baby your, your first two weeks or three weeks out of the hospital and the baby's um, sick and it usually happens on a Friday or Saturday, you know, when the doctor's office is closed and you, you're trying to get help and essentially their response is, well, if you think he's sick enough, just take him to the emergency room. Sure. And I think here, um, you know, that just drives up the cost of medicine. Here, uh, you're going to get a response from the doctor. And he's going to set you up with what you need to, to, to not overreact and go to the emergency room and keep driving up the cost of health care with those types of things. Yeah, I, I think mean, it's, like, it's more like the 50s. You know, it's more like the 50s. You're, it's a relationship more than it is, um, you know, you're just another number in my file and uh, you're in and out. Sure. The only difference being that your doctor is not sitting there smoking a cigarette <laughs> as he would have in the 50s. And, 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 and recommending the brand. Right, you know, so. right. But you make a great point, I mean, because uh, uh, this approach really drives down the costs and keep things under control because I've had a lot of people comment about the medical services here and say, look, I mean, these are as good or exceed the services in the United States with VIP level treatment at a much, much lower cost and to a point where many insurance companies in the U.S. are loading up planes and flying down patients to get treatments done down here as opposed to the U.S. because the insurance companies are saving a fortune as well. Absolutely. I see that happening, and as we become a smaller planet and a smaller world, you're going to see that happen even more so. So about maybe 10 years ago, I think, you got involved in the anti-aging clinic. Can you tell me a little bit more about really kind of how that changed uh, your treatment base here in Costa Rica and a little bit of the, the customer service that you guys are providing over there. Absolutely. Well, I, you know, I was around 40 years of age and um, I had started my uh, telecommunications business at the age of 31. And so I had been going about uh, nine, 10 years of traveling around the world, you know, meeting customers, meeting these wireless carriers in all different parts of the world and, just running myself down and I just felt like I was losing my edge and I felt something wasn't right. Um, generally speaking, I've uh, always tried to take good care of myself because um, at the age of 48, my father had his first heart attack. And at that point in time, you know, it really opened my eyes. I think I was 24 years of age at that time and it opened my eyes to say, hey, you know, it's not just my dad, it's his five other brothers. and. 
when I learned about that, then I started to read everything I could get my hands on about how am I going to change it um, for myself because I'm you know, 24. Maybe it's not too late for me to really pay attention to this. And and so at the age of 40, I, I was feeling like I wasn't getting the results anymore from my diet and exercise. Um, I was putting on weight. Um, I was burned out. I was tired. I wasn't as sharp as I was uh, mentally before. I mean, I, I started a business with $500 and competed with some of the largest wireless companies in the world and grew that business. And I knew that um, something wasn't right. So it was, I, I came across uh, some information and it was anti-aging and health management, uh, age management information. And I went and made an appointment with the doctor and they did a very thorough blood test, probably more thorough than about 99.99% of any uh, North American is ever going to get from their doctor. And he identified that my hormones were out of whack. I had, you know, cortisol levels that were, you know, very uh, elevated. I had uh, low HGH, low testosterone. And um, from that, we, they put me on a regimen to start uh, getting me back to where I would be at the age of 30, which is, you know, the goal of anti-aging medicine is to try to bring your hormone levels back to where they were at their peak, but not to exceed the peak. Because if you, that's where you hear all these horror stories, and that's where the abuses come in from baseball players, perhaps, or football players. Um, when you optimize hormones, you want to get back to where the normal upper physiological level is of a normal human being at their peak, because that's what the body uh, produces, and that's what the body uh, expects. But if you go above that, you can create side effects, and those side effects are when you start to get into trouble with cancers and uh, different things like that that you hear so much on the, the news when they, when they, especially governments and so forth, when they try to steer people away from this type of uh, medicine. Yeah, information is king here. Listen, we we got to take a little commercial break here really, really quick. We are speaking with James Ritchie right now from the Anti-Aging and Wellness Clinic here in Costa Rica. We come back from the break, we're going to talk to James a little bit more about some of the services that they're providing over there and some of the uh, great options that are available for people like you and me. Because like I said, I'm feeling a little bit old and I'm feeling tired and I'm feeling weak. And maybe the solution lies over there. So I'm going to take a commercial break. Be right back in two minutes. You're listening to This Week in Costa Rica only on the Overseas Radio Network. So you want to jump out your trick bag and ease on into hip bag. But you ain't just exactly sure what's hip. Live call-in shows and hosts from your favorite countries. This is the Overseas Radio Network. Just finished school? Newly retired? Looking for a change? Get certified to teach English and move abroad like thousands do every year. Global TESOL College comes to Costa Rica, the global organization that trains and certifies more ESL instructors than any other organization of its kind. For the past 15 years, we've trained and certified over 40,000 graduates in the field of TESOL. Live the dream of staying and studying at the beach. You will be living at one of our beautifully centrally located accommodation options in Haco Beach on Costa Rica's Pacific Coast. With a school, beach, and great restaurants all within walking distance, in a safe community with all the convenience of back home, discover why so many choose to earn their teaching certificate in Haco Beach, Costa Rica. Visit us today for more information at www.globaltesolcostarica.com. That's global, T-E-S-O-L, Costa Rica dot com. Mention this ad when you enroll and receive $50 off your tuition. Enroll with a friend and receive $100 off. The world is waiting for you and Global TESOL College is your ticket. From China's Great Wall to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, this is the Overseas Radio Network. Welcome back to This Week in Costa Rica, final segment of the day. Today we are speaking with James Ritchie from one of my new favorite places on the internet. I'm loving this website. I'm on antiagecr.com. It's the Anti-Aging and Wellness Clinic here in Costa Rica. And I'm going over some of the services and looking at some of the things that they provide over there. And boy, you guys really have a holistic approach to, to getting people feeling good and getting them well. Absolutely. I think, um, I think if you... What we consider ourselves is like the uh, meat and potatoes clinic 
uh, in relationship to uh, major, some major clinics that have, uh, everybody's seen that 74 year old man, maybe if they're flying on an airplane and they're going through the magazine and they, they get to the page and they see this guy that looks like he's 74 years old in the face and the head. And then they look at his body and it looks like the body of a, you know, 35 year old triathlon athlete. And that's Dr. Jeffrey Life, and he's the CEO and um, runs the company Senogenics in the United States. And what they have done, though, is cater to people that, you know, the common people, most of the people can't afford it because it's more like a country club environment. So, um, you know, our focus is really to stick to the medicine, not to get into the VIP meals and rolling out the red carpet and coming in and seeing big, you know, marble statues and that sort of thing, but just to stick to the basics and get them in and out of here and, and get them optimized and continue to monitor their blood work and make sure that we're doing the right approach for all of our patients. You know, it makes a lot of sense to me, um, again, the way that you're approaching it, because it's in line, as we spoke earlier, with, with the way a lot of the doctors are operating here in Costa Rica. You know, just looking at your website, I see a couple of things here, and they, I, it feels like me. It's kind of a sad, balding man. <laughs> There's people, you know, putting on weight and stuff. One of the things that I'm very interested in is that, you know, I, you know, I work out. I like to run. I eat well. I do cheat. You know, I enjoy my beer from time to time, and every now and then I go and get myself a cheeseburger, that sort of thing. But as we get older and I get into those upper 30s and early 40s, there's that little bit of belly fat that I just can't get rid of. Sometimes when I'm looking at my face, I'm feeling like it's a little bit of a catcher's mitt. What kind of things you guys got over there to help me out? Well, I think the first thing would be is a blood test. Uh, we would do a very thorough blood test. Um, it's on our website for anybody that would like to go to it at www.antiagecr.com. Coast, or cr.com that it's www.antiagecr.com and um, one of the one of the references there is um, you'll find one of the links is the blood test and the blood test is very thorough I mean we, we have three levels of blood test and we start with kind of like a basic range blood test depending on the age um, then we have a middle range blood test um, if you're a little bit older and maybe you had some medic, family medical history and we want to start looking for things like cancer markers and different things like that. So when we're treating people, we can kind of have an idea of what the risks might be for them in the future and we can bring that to their attention and we can kind of guide them um, in which direction to head as far as um, what uh, some of the trigger things are for cancers and that sort of thing um, and what to look for and to keep looking for. Them. So the, generally speaking, when you're talking about hormone balancing, you know, you really want to do a very, very thorough blood test. Uh, once we get the results from the blood test, that's usually done in one day. We've got a great lab down here. And after we do that, the doctor is going to study that for about 15 to 20 minutes. And this doctor that we have, Dr. Messin, he's our chief medical officer. He's been doing this since 2007. He's a licensed member of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, and that's, a, that's an organization that's a group of 126,000 physicians and scientists from around the world that are trying to, you know, promote and get the message out about what anti-aging can do. In fact, if we go back to, I think we talked about this before, uh, Corey, is that uh, Google just started Calico, and they did a Stanford study, and in the Stanford study, they realized if we cured all cancer, uh, the anti-aging component would really save more lives. So we're kind of missing the picture. If we can if we really put concentration on wellness and uh, aging, uh, we can learn a lot about um, what we can do for the future. Well, you know, when I'm 74 years old, I want to be able to play with my grandkids. I want to be able to ride a bicycle with my grandkids. I want to be able to climb a mountain with my grandkids. And that's not out of reach for us, especially if we're in middle age right now and we start thinking seriously about this technology. Well, this really speaks to something that the United States is talking about a lot right now, and it's those little buzzwords, preventative medicine, you know, getting ahead of these things and understanding what's happening with you physiologically first uh, to prevent these things from getting worse, you know, looking for those little flags and indicators that are saying, hey, maybe you're heading down this road and there's a, a correction to your course that you can take. Um, so it sounds like this is really where you guys make it the launching point is to get your blood tested. It looks like I see here you guys have, if I'm not crazy, a servicio at domicilio, which basically means you guys will come out to the house or the office and, and do the test. Am I wrong? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, sometimes we get business executives. You know, there might be CEOs that are just in Costa Rica traveling for a couple business meetings and they don't have time. 
Um, definitely we can send the lab out there to do the blood work and uh, you know sometimes we've done it in hotels uh, they'll go and, and this is all professional it's like for example I remember getting life insurance when I was back in the states and you know the nurse came and she drew my blood right in my office and there's nothing special about drawing blood you know you can do that just about anywhere so when we get an executive business executive he might be at meetings all day or he might be attending a conference but he's interested in our technology and our type of medicine and so we can we can send the people out there to the hotel. We can have their blood drawn, and um, everything though eventually does require a face-to-face -face consultation with the doctor. The doctor's got to really sit down and understand your history and learn a lot about you. It's not simply the blood work, but the blood work is the kind of like the objective metrics that um, you know somebody can say they're tired, but if their if their hormones are perfectly balanced and everything is. Uh, seems to be right you know then it could be other things so we have to look for those as well but uh, we are flexible and in, in some cases depending on the situation of course we'll go out and, and meet the patient right where they're at when i when i was uh, i was working at a language institute about two years ago uh, i had one or two students in in one of my programs that uh, were somewhat overweight but i wouldn't say obese and i took some time off i took a sabbatical and i met these guys for lunch maybe 60 days later, give or take. And it was like I was looking at a completely different person. These guys had lost weight. They had a ton of color in their face. They just, it was phenomenal, the transformation that happened. So, of course, my obvious question is, is do you guys, did you either get liposuction or did you go on some crazy crash diet? And they said, no, you know, what we did is we went and we saw a nutritionist and we had diet counseling where they did all kinds of testing to determine exactly what is our body type, how do we process certain kinds of foods, and then he or she made adjustments to our diet and, of course, added a little bit of an exercise regimen as well. And they said, we just lost weight instantly. We feel more energetic. And now it's just it's staying off. It's a new lifestyle that they've started because of that. I see that you guys have diet nutrition counseling there as well. Absolutely. You know, we, we follow many similar programs. Uh, we, we focus on a low glycemic index type diet um, for certain people that have had trouble following diets and disciplining themselves um, for whatever reason or just have put on so much weight that it's um, become a, a problem for them and they, they may be pre-diabetic. Uh, type 2 diabetes is you know, one of the, the uh, side effects of being obese for a number of years. And uh, we have what we call the HCG diet. And for a lot of people, if they're in the States, they'll, they may be driving down the uh, the highway and see medical weight loss and, and generally speaking medical weight loss means using a hormone uh, called HCG and what that does is it was ac actually discovered by a doctor um, it was a it was a British doctor he was practicing in Italy and discovered that if he gave his patients and this uh, hormone and then reduced the levels of calorie intake um, their fat stores were released more rapidly because in general when we reduce our calorie intake, our body wants to go into starvation mode. And so when it goes into starvation mode, it's trying to, after a thousand years of this evolutionary process, you know, it's trying to prevent losing the fat mm -hmm. it has. And it makes it even that much more difficult. And HCG seems to open up that barrier and let those fat stores uh, be released. So that's one injection, you know, periodically. And um, great results. You're looking at one to two pounds a day, you know, in some cases. So in a month, you know, you can, you can really take 40 pounds off somebody that can discipline themselves with that diet. But on, honestly, there's a lot of people that would prefer not to go that route. And if they want to just do the nutrition, um, we'll stick to the basics of just saying, you know, eat salads and, you know, throw a little chicken here and a little chicken there. And, you know, we'll balance it out for them as far as carbohydrates fats and uh, proteins so that uh, they can optimize that as well and try the normal one. In the last couple of minutes we have here, uh, I know that it's very popular for a lot of women, but in some cases men, to come down to Costa Rica uh, and are looking for some sort of a facial rejuvenation. And I see that mm -hmm. you guys offer this service as well. Look, we all want to look a little bit younger, a little fresher. And I'm, I'm curious as to what you guys are able to do over there. Well, we've got some of the latest technology for facial rejuvenation. In fact, we're one of the first in this whole entire Central American region to deliver this type of technology. It's based on the Dermapin, and it's a micro-needling device. And this device is really relatively new. In 2012, it won the best facial rejuvenation device 
and that award, you know, is not easy to win. So this device is, uh, you know, about 100 times a minute. It, it sticks micro needles, and I don't want to scare anybody when I say this, but this is just, a, it just, it's like running a, a machine across your face, and you just feel like a vibration as these needles, um, they're microscopic, penetrate the dermis. And when that happens, it creates little microscopic uh, uh, damage, but not, nothing you can see. I mean, you might see a little redness in the face after the procedure. But what happens is your body automatically goes into healing mode, sends growth factors and healing factors to those areas, and the skin starts to produce more collagen. So what they found by using this technology is they can actually remove acne scarring, they can remove fine lines and wrinkles, and there's no downtime whatsoever. Fascinating stuff. Fascinating stuff. We have been speaking with James Ritchie from the Anti-Aging and Wellness Clinic here in Costa Rica. That is AntiAgeCR.com. Of course, I'm going to put links on This Week in Costa Rica for people as well to make it easy for us to get over there. I want to thank you so much for your time today. This is fascinating stuff. And I kind of feel, I have a feeling I'm going to be jumping, I think I'm going to be jumping in a car and uh, coming down to your clinic and checking out some of your services because I, I definitely need a little bit of work done. You know what I mean? Oh, how old are you? I'm 38 right now. <laughs> 38. Yeah, you know, you know, that's one thing that's important thing to tell all listeners is that, you know, from about the age of 35 up is really when you want to, you know, pay close attention to this and start monitoring it. And especially if you're over 40 or 45 or 50 and you want to have a long uh, life um, and you want to have a strong life and you want to go into your, you know, 60s, 70s and 80s feeling good. I'm 50 years old myself. I'm glad I started 10 years ago. And I really think it's the right thing to do for people to take a good look at it. And the blood work will tell you where you're at. Sounds great. Thanks so much for your time today, James. Okay. Thank you very much, Corey. And thank you guys for tuning in once again this week. Greatly appreciated. We have come, unfortunately, to the end of the hour today. But do not fret, let not your heart be troubled. We will be back next week, and I've got a special show coming up for you guys where we're going to be doing our first of a series of Spanish lessons for all you gringos out there to help you guys make the cultural adjustment here while you're in Costa Rica. In the meantime, man, I'm getting my boogie board out. I'm going to go hit the waves. You've been listening to This Week in Costa Rica only on the Overseas Radio Network. Overseasradio.com, broadcasting from Panama to Paris and beyond.